All right, Leadheads, we are back. This is episode 250. Woohoo! We've hit another milestone with our podcast. Keep cranking out these awesome episodes for you guys. We appreciate all the support from you, Leadheads, and we're going to keep them coming. Uh, and we've got a great one for you today, so stay tuned for that. If you didn't check out last week's episode, make sure you go back to episode 249, where we had trick shooter Rick Ream. We had the guys from Alpha Foxtrot talking about their aluminum frame uh, for Glocks now, for your Glock 19. They've come out with an awesome aluminum frame that's got some nice added addition features. And then uh, we also talked gun safety for kids. Yehuda Reamer, who's an author, uh, has written a couple of books that uh, promote gun safety for children. So make sure you go back to episode 249. Check those out. Make sure you go to those uh, individuals and those companies. Let them know you heard about them on Talking Lead. So this week, in uh, celebration of our 250th episode, we are bringing you an awesome guest. Um, you guys probably heard about this company. They're up and coming, uh, but their product uh, is uh, very well known, especially in, in our area, Tennessee. We've got Prime One Camo, Stacy Walker. Welcome in. Hey. Good hey, Stacy. So uh, I heard about you guys uh, a while back from our good buddy Chad Hoover, who Chad's yeah. been on the show a few times. Uh, and then I just We're, saw where you guys are recently becoming members of the Antares Alliance, which Talking Letter is a member of. We are. We're excited about that. You know, the, I love, uh, I'm patriotic to the core. You know, we've got military family and just believe in everything it stands for. So we're just really excited to be a part of that group. Well, we're glad to to have you on with them. Uh, Antares Alliance, you guys, I know I don't talk about them enough on this show, um, but uh, Talking Letter is a member. I'm a personal member. Lifetime member uh, of the Alliance as well. Uh, a great organization that's, that's bringing together patriotic companies with patriotic consumers. So if you guys want to make sure that your, the products that you are buying are going to support our law enforcement, our military, our patriotic efforts here in this country, uh, you can go to Antares Alliance and there's a whole slew of companies there and that list is growing by the day and uh, they're going to be Soon to add Prime One Camo. Congratulations. That will be the official camo. We're excited about that. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's going to be awesome. So I know you and I have talked about maybe doing something with us. Uh, you know, the lead sled is due for a new facelift. So we, we might have something in the works with that lead head. So stay tuned for that. But uh, Got it cooking. <laughs> got it cooking. Got it cooking. And uh, you can tell Stacy's got a bit of an accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a coon ass from South Louisiana. <laughs> she's South Louisiana. She's uh, they're currently over in uh, the middle west, Pickwick. middle west part of Tennessee. Yeah, Pickwick uh, Lake. Right before it starts getting crappy, part of Tennessee. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like pretty much after you go past that area, then you start getting you know toward the Memphis and uh, just turn around. <laughs> I don't, yeah, just don't go that. Don't go that way. Just stop there and, and see Prime One. Check out Prime One. Uh, but Stacy, before we get into learning more about you and Prime One, uh, all the awesome things that you guys are about, I hear that talking lead jack wagon train rolling in. So Gunny, <laughs> bring that train in and let's load it up with some jack wagons. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week, so brace yourself, baby. Can you see that guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what an idiot <laughs> right <laughs> bless him bless his heart i mean he thinks he's doing right i'm sure uh, i mean they he's give you just, all that yeah they give you all that extra material that you're supposed to use it right <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know he's an older guy i might have to give him a break if he was younger i'd have to bust his chops real hard uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bust him good right here so, so our first jack wagon, I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Uh, I typically will let our, our guests start off, but, uh, I think we want to go ahead and jump on this one. This was a, a listener submitted jack wagon and it's from Pierce T. I'm not going to say his last name. He may not want to uh, be called out on this, but, um, he had sent in this picture of this guy 
and uh, it looks like he's in like Coles or uh, Tar TJ Maxx or Target or something like that. He's in some sort of a, a retail store. Uh, walking down the aisle there, and he's got his holster. He's got a drop leg holster. Okay. Uh, just regular old clothes. He's just got like a polo, jeans. He's got some sandals, uh, and a ball cap on. Looks to be an older feller. Um, but he's just, just strolling down the aisle there. Got his thumbs in his pockets, you know, looking around, doing, doing some shopping. Probably just waiting on mama. You know, she's probably in there shopping. And he's got his drop leg holster on, but his drop leg holster goes all the way down to his knees. And he's got it, he's got it strapped around the, the top and lower part of his knee, more like a knee brace than, than a drop, a drop leg holster. Uh, so we're going to throw this guy, not necessarily this guy, but yeah, this guy, but people who, who are buying equipment and not learning the proper way to rig their equipment. Uh, it's, yeah, unless you're going to double as a knee brace and a gun holster, yeah, don't go there. I mean, I can see if the dude's knee's hurting, he's like, dang, I'm maybe he's going in there to shop for a knee brace, you know, but it, <laughs> until until he finds one, he's using his uh, his drop leg holster. He's doubling it, yeah. Uh, but it looks like he might have a, I don't know, a Glock or a SIG in there. Um, but guys, the proper way to wear a drop leg holster is it's meant for people who are wearing vest. And it's supposed to fit just below your vest so that you can get to your gun. So, it, I mean, it's really supposed to be up closer to your hip. And then that lower strap on that is supposed to go around your groin area, you know, up up and round and over, right up as snug as it can be. It's not supposed to move. It looks like he's got it pretty tight. So I don't, I don't know if it's going to move around, but... Uh, there's some great videos on YouTube. You guys can go to uh, Rob Pincus' YouTube channel. I think he's got a, a video on it. Travis Haley, I think I saw, has got a, a video on the, the proper way to uh, put on your drop leg holster. So um, the, the information's out there, guys. All you got to do, I mean, the internet is a great tool. It's a wealth of information. Sometimes it's it's false information, Stacy. But uh, I think you can discern between what's actual and, you know, what's going to be bad information. But uh, the information's out there, guys. So welcome to the Jack Wagon Train drop leg knee holsters. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What about you? You got any Jack Wagons? Anything come to mind? I, you know, I, I wish I could have snagged it today. There was a post of a guy and... uh Bless him. He's going to have a, a bad day because he had the stock, the butt of the gun on the top of his shoulder and his eye was laid up against the, the optics and he <laughs> is going to have one heck of a busted eye after he shoots that thing. Oh so, my God, he's going to have yeah. a shiner. Please don't that. do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they should Not do a before, a before and after picture. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, well his would be in the emergency room, no doubt. Yeah. For sure. And uh, speaking of optics, um, did you notice what he had on his rifle? Uh, no, it was too far, you know, zoomed out to pay attention to the yeah. actual type. Well, of course, the lead heads know that if you want a great optic, you go to Ride On USA, the official optics of Talking Lead, RideOnUSA.com. Uh, just just talked with Brady the other day to get an update on the one to eight, and the I think it's a. I always forget where I think it's a six by thirty four or four by thirty four. They're getting ready to come out with long range precision scope, uh, but they are in the works and they are close. They're getting close on those, and as soon as they're available, we will let you guys know. But in the meantime, you can go there and get pretty much any power that you need for your hunting, your tactical, your home defense needs. They've got red dots, they've got magnifiers, and uh, Stacy, they've even got binoculars. That's awesome. And, uh, you gotta have some good, good, good binoculars. Good sure. binoculars. You're, you're an outdoorsy nature person. Uh, we're going to find out more about you in just a little bit. Uh, but those, those would be some awesome things for your kit. Those binoculars would be. Absolutely. Right on USA.com. Make sure you guys are going to and supporting all the people that support Talking Lead podcast. Right on being one of those X Steel targets. X Steel targets.
the best, most affordable AR500 steel targets on the market today are X Steel Targets. Guys, go visit Bud, and they've got pretty much any kind of target that you need there. Uh, they've got the fun uh, reactive targets. They've got the Texas Stars. They've got the Dueling Trees. And then they've got those uh, for you competition shooters, you long-range precision shooters. And if you don't see something that fits your needs, call Bud because they can custom make you something. XSteelTargets.com. This is the part of the show for my, uh, <laughs> as you can tell, shameless plugs. Hey, that's all right. No, they got to do that. That's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to tie it in with a conversation when I can. You know, like yeah, like well, you, it was perfect timing. You Absolutely. brought the the scope up, so I was like, hey, it's a good time to do that. Yep. 1776 United, the official swag provider of Talking Lead. You guys can go there and get your Talking Lead T-shirts, your patches. And soon to be the Talking Lead, Stacy, check these out, the Talking Lead Assault Mugs. Cool. Be- better than a Yeti, don't be a snowflake, get your Talking Lead Assault Mug at Very cool. dip123.com forward slash Talking Lead, but soon to be at 1776. Uh, Modern Spartan Systems, don't just clean your firearms, optimize them with Modern Spartan Systems line of... Uh, cleaning products, uh, optimization products. They've got your uh, accuracy oil, carbon destroyer, copper lead destroyer. They've even got uh, a product to clean your scopes. So you, when you get your right on optics, they've got a product that'll clean the lens on those. And uh, Stacy, we were talking about the lead sled earlier. I'm getting close to 320,000 miles on that bad boy. And well, that's rolling and that's due to modern spartan systems tvt engine oil additive it's a great product that you can add to pretty much anything has got a motor and it's going to help protect and extend the life of that motor and i'm i'm Wait. attributing my i guess you call it the second life of the lead sled to modern spartan systems tvt engine oil additive and we put it in our, cool. our lawn mowers our weed eaters our generators uh, and then all our other vehicles, uh, we've got it in that as well. You check it out. Very cool. And then, of course, the official wristwear of Talking Lead, Defy Watches. Uh, Jeremy, you guys have heard Jeremy Smith on our show before. Uh, he's due, so don't be surprised if we have him on the next episode or two with another special deal just for you leadheads on uh, the Defy line of watches. They're getting ready to come out with their classic field watch. That was the last one that we talked about. And I know a lot of you leadheads took advantage of that. It was like 50% off uh, price that he was offering uh, for you guys who went and pre-ordered that. So as those start hey, coming I can, in. I can match that 50% off. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Yeah, all of our, all of our, uh, I, we don't actually manufacture any of our own product, but we have licensees and I bring in a bunch of our hunting and, you know, gear for the, the winter coming up and new hunting season. And so 50% off, if you'll use pro staff one, uh, as the code will, uh, you'll get, we have all of our new stuff coming in in August, all through the month of August, we'll have gear coming in, awesome. in three different camo colors. Very good. So as, as we're talking with Stacy guys, go ahead and go to their website, which is P R Y M the number one, camo.com right to get yep. that i got that right yep you got it right Woo-hoo! uh so you can be looking at uh stacy's camo and then we're going to talk about how she came up with the pattern uh, a little bit of history about the pattern and uh but before we do that we're going to get some interviews that we did from the big three east which uh you guys haven't heard but maybe two or three of those since we've been to the big three east but we've got several of those we're going to be dropping and then of course several more from uh nra and a couple more from from shot show so we're going to cut some of those interviews in here in just a minute but we want to tell you about this contest that Prime One and Stacy are involved with, and we want you leadheads to get involved as soon as you hear this, because uh, it's time sensitive. So I'm going to let Stacy tell you about this this cool um, contest that that her company's involved in. Well, we've got uh, some buddies over at UF Pro Gear. They're based out of the Ukraine. They're one of the elite uh, 
tactical apparel companies in the world. They we met with them at Ger- in Germany at Iwa, and we also met with them at Shot Show. They they make some stuff for some of our uh, special ops guys here in the states and then all over the world. They do GSG nine. So just really cool guys, Armin Wagner and all of those guys over there are awesome. And they surprised me about a week ago with an email saying that we at Prime One Camo were going to be included on a eight camouflage world competition. And they were doing it in line with the FIFA Cup. They were going to do the whole bracketed system. It was us and Multicam Green from the U.S. And then they had... Hold on, I'm going to tell you the names. All right. Um, they had Cadpat from France, Flectran. They had uh, Vegetato and uh, Slow Cam. So, yeah, and Green Zone. So, eight different camouflages, two from Italy, one from France, um, Slovenia, not sure, Canada, and then and two from the U.S. So, yep. this all started Monday. Uh, UF, UF Pro posted it on Facebook, on their Facebook page and on their Instagram page. You could vote in either location and immediately Multicam dropped out of the run, runnings. They got Today, beat. going yeah. on, do what? I said Multicam got beat. Multicam got beat. And so we are the last of the Mohicans for the U.S. So guys, I need y'all to bring on the patriotic support. We need the lead head uh, support, guys. Our voting guys. is actually going on right now. And right now, we've got a pretty, from what I can tell, substantial lead on France. And we are hoping to move to the second bracket. Right now, in the second bracket, they've got uh, two that are already in place. And so uh, there's four camouflages battling today. And the two out of those two winnings will move to the second bracket and then down to the top two in the third bracket to the final. So I would say over the next week, it's going to be on. Um, you can find uh, we are living on social media right now, blowing <laughs> it up. I mean, just they probably think we're insane over there in the other side of the pond uh, because we have lit them up. And uh, so go to UF Pro <laughs> on Facebook or on Instagram, their Instagram story. You can click on the button and it'll pop up the little image of who to vote for. If you hit it again, it'll it'll pop up Prime One Camo. But uh, if you go to my uh Facebook page, uh, PrimeOneCamo.com's Facebook page, or any of our social media channels. We've got live video feed. We've got 20 million people posting on how to how to vote. So you can figure that out real quick. But uh, and yeah, we've I'm been call, sharing I don't it. Care. If you don't wear Prime One Camo, it's all good. I love you anyway. It's a USA thing at this point. We gotta beat them, America. and we want to be the ones in the end, standing in the winner circle. There you go, and guys, I'm posting that stuff on Talking Lead social media pages as well. So uh, just just click on any of those links that go to the the UF, and it's um um what's you what's the freaking thing for you? U the letter U F as in Foxtrot. Pro gear, right? Is that what it is? Oh, it's- I couldn't think of what they call you. I, I drew a <laughs> blank there for a minute. Uh, but like I said, you can go to Prime One's pages. You can go to Talking Lead's pages. We've got links. Um, Stacy's even done a video on the proper way to vote. So you guys can uh, check that out as well. Make sure you're getting those votes in for Prime One and Merca. Cause we want to, yeah, we it'll win. probably be, uh, I would say that tomorrow they'll determine it, it's a 24 hour voting period. So I imagine midday tomorrow, they'll, they'll finalize whoever won today's rounds. And then they'll, they'll probably by Saturday, if they do it over the weekend, we'll be up to vote again. So yeah. just keep an eye on it throughout the weekend and into next week, because, uh, I'm planning on us winning this thing. I, I don't, I don't, I, it's either fail Fail big or win big. I'm not. There's going to be some incentives um, or a incentive. I don't know how many you're going to give away, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk if about we that. win today, I'm going to randomly draw four numbers and then I'm going to go two on Instagram and two on Facebook and basically scroll down to find that place position for who voted. And uh, if it's a prime one person, um, we're going to give away some swag. So. Every bracket that we win, swag will be following. So just spread the word. There you go, Leadhead. So there's a little incentive for you to go vote as well. 
none of those other companies are giving anything away. So to hell with them. <laughs> no, they they don't even half of them probably don't even realize there's a competition going on that they're in. <laughs> I'm sure Multicam hey, didn't even I'm know. Grassroots. I'm old school. I believe in in staying in touch with everybody. And well, you I got a competitive personal. nature. I can tell. You you don't like Very, to be beat. I, I figure you better win big or lose big. One or the other. There's no in between. There you go. There you go. So you lead heads. Uh, Get uh, get involved with this. Take part. Uh, there could be some cool swag in it for you guys from uh, from Prime One Camo. So yeah, we wanted to get that in before we cut it into these uh, these episodes here um, for you guys. We're going to be back with more from Stacy. So you guys uh, enjoy these interviews. Gunny, take it away. Howdy. Hit it, sweetheart. So I sir. All right, guys, we are back at the 2018 NRA annual meetings in uh, Dallas. Got my good buddy Mike Sedini here with me. So as you're listening at home, uh, we're doing some live broadcast here too, so you'll hear us fade in and out from the microphones a little bit. Uh, but joining us today, we've got none other than Charlie Melton. How you doing? Brad Stair. How you doing? And uh, these guys just made a world record long shot uh, with rifle. Uh, how was that? Like two point? How many miles was that? It was- 5,025 yards. There you go. 5,025 yards. <laughs> That's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> and then you're going really, to... It really, really Nobody's I broke that right. yet, right? Uh, I think a couple people claim to broke it. Yeah, okay. Sure. So you got a couple people out there just, they just pumping claim. their chest. Hey, I broke it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how legit they are. Who yeah. knows? They don't have proof though, right? They don't have like a video and pictures well, like I guess you guys they, got. I guess they got as much proof as we do, so. Well, y'all, y'all actually had some, <laughs> some film, and you had witnesses out there and whatnot. Definitely but had that. No. You're going to shatter that one, though. Oh, yeah. Coming We're, up in, was it September? Right. Nope, September. And we'll actually have some film crews out this time. So There you go. Legit. And and Talking Land is going to be there. All right. Yes, sir. So we're going to witness this. You guys are going to go. You're going to warm up at 4,000, right? Yep. Then you're going to hit the 5,000. Correct. And then you're going to just nail the 6,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 6,000, Mike. And we're gonna do some testing on a bunch of different calibers too. So. Right. Okay. What's uh, what what primary caliber are you thinking about using for this? Primary is still gonna be the 408 Tejas, but we have also a uh, 338 Tejas we're bringing and a 30. And a 30 how, Tejas. Okay. And you're the you're the developer of the Tejas yes, round. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about that for those who haven't uh, heard your interview. They're, we did. They're Wildcats. I've been doing it for about 40 years. Yeah, so you know I've your stuff a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. And, we, <laughs> and I've been designing a few bullets, turning some bullets. Yeah. And what, what bullet are we looking at right here? That's the 300 Tejas. This is the 300 Tejas. It's one of the most versatile. There it is. So you can shoot from 150 grain up to 230 grain, which is unusual without changing the twist. Very cool. Very cool. That is a... Yeah, Brad's bullets are pretty amazing. Yep. That, that round right there, when you pull the trigger at 800 yards, it hits the target before you even feel the recoil. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Now, you also design rifles to go around these, Correct. these Correct. magnificent pieces of uh, bulletry. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> bulletry? It is now. <laughs> it is now. I just made it one. Um, so, for this new shoot, have you got a new rifle that you've designed? Uh, I'm actually redesigning the 408 for Charlie, and then, yes, the 338 is going to be different. We're looking at a 360 grain bullet, I'm trying to run it 3300. 3300. 360. Be nice. How are you feeling about this? I'm uh, excited and looking forward to it. Excited, looking forward <laughs> to it. Now, are you are you gonna like surprise us with any kind of secret stuff out there? Is I mean, this is pretty much everything. Well, that if you're I told you that, to... then it wouldn't be. <laughs> I got you. I got you. What about optics? What kind of optics you guys gonna be throwing on there? Uh. We're, it, we'll definitely be using the Valdata scopes and uh, Night Force is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Trying to get some sponsorship from them. So. Very cool. Well, they're probably here, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I've yeah, been talking to them. Okay. Yeah, got, it, got it in the works. Yep. I haven't talked to the right person yet working on it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's coming up in September. If, are you in screen? I can't even see. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Very good. Uh, if you Can you read that? If you see questions people have, just read them off there and we'll answer them. Uh, same thing on Facebook. If you guys have questions for Charlie and Brad, let us know. Craig is asking a question. Okay, well, let let Craig. Uh, He's asking a 375 Chevy Tac or a XM 2010. 375 Chi Tac 
then into the Tejas form. So it's a 50 degree shoulder, straighter case. I pick up almost 300 feet per second over the original shy tap. Wow. Which adds quite a bit of distance. Yes, it does. Yeah, there's a, the, when we did the 5,000 yard shot, the shy tap rounds, they were tumbling at about 4,000 yards. So Brad's, Brad's flew perfect all the way out to five and probably going to go to six or seven. Yeah. Or no. seven. <laughs> or seven. <laughs> we may yeah. just do seven uh, while we're yeah, at we're like, pressure sure. on each That'll other. That'll definitely be next. <laughs> well, we make sure Bud gets a target made for seven also, just in case. Well, we'll bring the 50 uh, yeah. Tejas and might as well ring it out. Yeah. You might as well. Yeah. So uh, that's something that we're going to have also. X-Steel Targets is going to be uh, making some some targets for these world-breaking yep. shots. Uh, world record breaking shots. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Nat Warfare, they're coming up with a new system, too. Well, oh, okay. It's the thing you put on back of the still, and it records your shots when you hit it, like on your phone and your... And an indicator. It's oh, nice. Indicator. Nice yeah, deal. So. Yeah, but, we just had him on yesterday. He didn't mention anything about that. Yeah, George, well, hopefully it's not a secret. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. We were too intrigued about his flying targets and... Uh, he made his, some great stuff. His remote control pig target. It was pretty cool, so... Right. Uh, <laughs> did you see where he put the vest on it yesterday? Uh-uh. I guess the NRA told him he couldn't drive it around, so he went and got a... A service dog vest. Put service on. dog. He's like, this <laughs> is my service pig. pig. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they just uh, took that with a grain of salt and let him do it. Oh yeah. So. I actually uh, was messing around. I think it's powerful. Oh, it's yeah. got a lot of power. It'll take off. Mm-hmm. You know, just yeah. breathing on that trigger. Oh, yeah, remote control. <clears throat> yeah, I got one of his. I hit a lady in the <laughs> aisle. And uh, you were hitting a bunch of people. I was hitting, well, I was hitting Ralph hitting on Raphael, purpose. Raphael, my national sales manager. And, uh, <laughs> I was hitting Ralph on purpose, though. The rest is collateral. <laughs> this is collateral. Yeah, I got a, I got one of the, his moving targets I use for movers out to 1,000, but it's, a, it's bigger than that one. But, yeah, that thing yeah. will run over, like, four-foot-tall grass and just mow right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those things are powerful. You check them out at Nat Warfare. Um, had those guys on. Yes, George Ford. Yep, George yeah, Ford. Great dude. Great dude. So, uh, Charlie Mike, Precision, sir. you guys are doing some training as well. You have Yes, sir, we teach a If you guys want to learn how to shoot long distance, you can yep. do it from the master here and how they do that. Yep, we teach a long-range course. It's a two-day long course that will get you out to 1,000 yards. And then uh, we also do pistol and carbine courses. We're based out of Normandy, Texas, but uh, we travel anywhere in the U.S. Travel all over. Yep, so um, as long as you got range, we can... Are you going to be going down to Florida anytime soon? Are you working something yep. out with the uh, Yeah, I just talked to Big 3. CJ yesterday's Big 3. Yeah. So uh, he's, he's got a bunch of guys that want to do a course, so he's probably next April he's booking it up. Okay. And that's going to be like a private one, but people can go to your website and Yep, you can go to charliemicrecision.com. And, uh, well, it's being redone right now, but it should be up here, here in the next week or two. Yeah. best way to do is just call me on my cell phone. It's on the website. There you go. I have, a, I have, a, I have a question for you. Yeah. So TJ <laughs> – Keep in mind, I'm, a, I'm like the worst shot. I'm the opposite of you, right? Like I, in this industry, like I, I can't hit anything. Like do, when do people? Do you see it in someone? They're like they, they're not gonna be able to do this no matter what. Or no, uh, so far out of I probably ta- taught over 100 and probably 30 people. Right. I, I haven't had anyone that couldn't shoot a group at a thousand after two days. Really? Yeah. I, the I, only wonder way you I wonder if I could screw that number up. I don't. You. I don't think you could. <laughs> as long as you can listen and do what I tell you. Follow directions. You'll do it. Right. As long as you no, follow directions, you'll be there. That that's crazy to me though, because it's such a. I think it, you know. To me, it, it seems like such a difficult thing, right? I mean, yeah. hitting something at twenty-five yards to oh, me yeah. is like insane. Yeah. So, like when you talk about a thousand yards, it, then, it's all the same. It's all off of principles of shooting. Once you get those seven principles and you practice them perfect every time through repetition, you build muscle memory and it just becomes a natural thing like walking and breathing. When did you, like, and I'm, and I'm sorry if this has been talked about before, but I, I met you at Big Three and, and yeah. we had some beers together. And, right. You know, I mean, you always think after, like, oh, I wish I would have asked them, and, like, when did you know you were a good shot? Like, amongst your friends? Like, you, where, yeah. when were you, like, uh, uh, well, I got my first gun when I was like five years old, so. I've always, my grandpa taught, I learned on Kentucky Windage, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then once I joined the military, uh, just because I've been shooting my whole life on Kentucky Windage, and then I got some kind of high-speed stuff, not really, but <clears throat> started learning through the military, and I was always one of the best shots in my platoon, and always outshot everybody, so. That's, that's the only people that could compare were other southern people, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, oh, I had a good question. Uh, you were talking about when you were younger. Um, What's some of the, the craziest shots you've ever made that you're just like, there's no way I could do this, and you wound up? Yeah, well, the first time I've ever shot anything past 1,400, because that's about as far as you go out in sales numbers goes. Yeah. Was, uh, we went up and did some testing up in northern Washington. We used to go up there and 
trout because they got crazy winds and stuff up there. So the longest I'd ever shot was uh, we went up there. I hit a 3,300 yard shot. <laughs> and that, that was the longest I ever use? shot. A 408 shot tech. That was when they first came out. Yep. The Tejas right there. Yeah. Now it's, uh, <laughs> it. yeah, the technology today is amazing. We got all kind of gadgets now. <laughs> and then there's the the bullet right. And then that's the which one right there? That's the 300. That's the 300. So on Instagram, uh, they're seeing this. This is the 300 Tejas. Correct. Based but, on the Remington Ultra Mag. Remington Ultra Mag. Very cool. Actually, actually, I think my most amazing shot's been hanging out of a truck window with a 17 HMR. <laughs> in one hand, a flashlight in the other, and a pig running across the road. And I hit, hit him right behind the ear. Nailed him. <laughs> that was probably my most amazing shot. <laughs> that was one of your most taste, you know, tasted good shots, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big pig roast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got dinner. <laughs> right. So for somebody who's just getting into long-range precision shooting, uh, equipment-wise, what would you recommend they start off with? With equipment, you definitely don't want to go cheap on equipment. It's kind of like buying stereo equipment. Don't go cheap. Your, your optics are very important, and obviously your gun. Yeah. Some of the – just getting into long-range shooting, one of the best rifles out there now for the price is probably that Ruger Precision. Yes, I agree. We've, we've taken those for the money. You can't beat it. Right out of the box, it'll shoot a six-inch group at 1,000. Savage has some, too, so it's not so bad. Yeah. 1,000 bucks. Yeah. Hmm. One of them is nearby, isn't it? Uh, one of those companies. Oh. Ruger. Yeah. Ruger, yeah. I talked to them yesterday. Hopefully we'll be doing a CMP version of that. Doing a little something with them? No. Very cool. Uh-oh. We got an announcement going on there. That's loud. So, um, Charlie Mike, precision, not performance. <laughs> it's a, yeah, precision it's performance. You perform. You perform very well. <laughs> precision performance. The website, one more time on that? CharlieMikePrecision.com, and then we're on all the social media stuff under the same name. And all the social media. You can email us at CharlieMikePrecision at gmail.com, or the best way to get in touch right now is uh, give me a call on my cell phone, 858-204-0239. And how far out are you on your classes right now? I know those, those things are filling up. Yeah, we're uh, pretty much booked up for this month and next month, and then uh, I just got a couple sprinkled in there in September, October, and November. So. Okay. So, yeah, if you're interested, of course, call me and uh, give me some dates and we can pencil you in. There you go. There you go. And Brad? Yes, sir. For you, if you guys want Brad to uh, do a custom rifle for you guys, you're going to have to wait a while because he's, <laughs> he's, he's a little behind. He's a little behind, but he could, he could do it. We're building a new shop. But uh, for those who want to get in touch with you, Brad, uh, maybe they've got some uh, questions, ballistic questions. Sure. Uh, he would be the good guy to call. 801-731-8152. And where That's are you at, out of? Out of uh, West Haven, Utah, west of Ogden. Utah. And you're at Tejas, right? Texas. Yes. Yep. Normandy, you're, Texas. Normandy. Two hours from Dallas, Houston, and Austin. Right yeah. in the middle. Right in the smack dab middle of everything. Shooter's trying. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we got some questions, random questions here that we've been hitting people with here at NRA. Um, I'm going to start off with, if you could be president for a day, what would your first presidential act be? Whew. That's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we've had some good answers on this one. Mm. I think the first thing we do no is pressure. make sure that Second Amendment is ironclad, solid, untouchable. Which it really is. It kind of is. But truly, be, yeah. truly do it. Yep. Yeah. That's a good answer. I like that. I would say, yeah, the Second Amendment. And I would say uh, come up with a program to start raising men again from children. There you go. <laughs> Maybe uh, not jacking around with the Boy Scouts and yeah. uh, be changing that, Doing something. that yeah. formula that's been working for decades and decades. Yeah, yeah. Man yeah. skills. Man skills. I like yeah, that. I, need that. I like that. That's a good one. Yes. Um... Did you did you have a off the wall one you wanted to ask? What are some of the ones we've done? Um, uh, they did the oh. coffee one. Ah, <laughs> you did the coffee. I one? don't think that question is gonna go. No, well it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Do it. I like it. I, okay, I just want to see his face. If you could be a drink at Starbucks, what would your name be? <laughs> uh, Crown Royal. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. American honey. And close for the day. <laughs> close for the day. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, and I think we talked about this too. Um, have I hit you with the new guy questions? The whole line of new guy questions? I don't think so. I don't think we did that. Uh, when it comes to pop culture, and I know you, you know, you don't, 
do a lot of movies or TV or anything like that. But what's your go-to that's firearms related? You know, whether it's a movie or TV show or a song, you know, maybe some music or. Oh, favorite TV show? You mean movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Tombstone's my favorite fire. Tombstone. Oh, that's Didn't they just that's have an anniversary one. with that movie? I think so. They need to come out with another one. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, a, a, a reboot of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, reboot. I don't know. I don't think they can touch the original. No, nah, it was pretty good. Yeah, those guys, they nailed it. Yep. Yeah, yeah Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. Val Kilmer, Kurt Old Russell. Doc Holiday. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That's one of my favorite movies. I think it was on Monday night. When did we get here? The way we got here. Wednesday. It was playing Wednesday. when we, yeah, Wednesday, uh, when we were settling in the hotel room, turning it on. First thing came on was Tombstone. That's awesome. Perfect. <laughs> it was. It was very. It's cool. the way to set the show. Yeah. What about you, Brad? I I couldn't disagree. That's that's <laughs> hard to beat. It really is hard to beat. Yeah, Tombstone. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I love the old six shooters and lever action rifles too. Someday I'll learn how to teach cowboy action shooting. <laughs> well, Miss Tia there just uh, got herself a pair of six shooters from the Wall of Guns. I heard that's pretty awesome. Yesterday, so you teach her how to shoot those six shooters. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you do any six shooting? I'm just starting to get into it. Okay. No, I mean I've always shot them, but that cowboy action shooting is pretty yeah. cool. Which uh, which caliber are you liking those? I like the 45 long Colt and then the 357. I got a 357 one too. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty cool. We can work those over too. Yeah. You can do the the six shooters. You bet. I built a five shooter. Yeah. <laughs> you do a five shooter. A fifty Tejas. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, Magnum Research does a forty-five seventy revolver. I do want to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Definitely. Um, next one I want to hear. We are we know you know military law enforcement background uh, served our country. Um, what about you? you? Couldn't get in. Okay. Didn't have a left heel. So I've done everything I can from the outside for our guys. Yeah. Patriot. Still do. Yeah. Patriot. Still yeah, you don't have to be in the military to be a rivals. Patriot. <laughs> yep, absolutely. There's a lot of a good lot patriots of out there that never served. If you could spend the day at the range with anyone, uh, whether they're still alive, maybe somebody's passed away, or a fictional character or a group of people, who would you like to spend the day at the range with? Doc Holliday. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Holliday, White Earp. Yeah. Actually, I think we're paired up. <laughs> that, that's that, a good pair. That's on your, on your list, too? It's a good pair. Okay. Uh, they're that's kind of they're kind going of going a to. fictional, real people kind of though, because mm-hmm. I, mean, I think they're larger than life as far as how they've been portrayed, you know, through the movies and in the books and stuff. But oh yeah, yeah, it's a it's a so, kind of a strange question though for him, and probably you too. You guys have probably been on the range with some incredible yeah. people, right? I yeah, know you right. have, right? Yeah. My answer, <laughs> so it's like, my answer is you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say we're kind of that's where we want to be. Yeah. yeah. And just keep pushing. Now, when you when you pick Doc Holliday, which version of Doc Holliday are you going with? Are you going with the Val Kilmer one, or are you going to go with the uh, the Randy uh, Quaid? Definitely Val Kilmer. Yeah. I think he, hopefully he was more like that. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> that's, that's my Doc Holliday. Yes, what, sir. What I want Doc Holliday. Yes, sir. Uh, so, bucket list. And this is another thing, too. I mean, you guys pretty much can, can get anything you want. Um, what's your next got to have, want to have? Whether it's uh, firearms, piece of kit, maybe a vehicle, that's you know what's I'm getting that. It's you harder know, for me because I, I build something. what I want. I, mean, right. I build the vehicles, I build the guns. So yeah, my Suburban's a thousand horsepower. Oh my gosh! Made by hand. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know. I really don't. I you're, just build it and do it. You're not wanting for anything. Okay. What about you? Well, I think my bucket list, I'm, we're working on it now. We're going to build a lodge out where we live right. so we can house people when they come out. So that's okay. probably on top of my list. You're going to have a room for old Lefty? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely have a room for Lefty. I know what uh, what Memphis wants. Is he still over there? Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> there he is. Memphis wants a girlfriend. He's sacked out. He said, I just want a little more time to sleep, everybody. I'm so tired. <laughs> so um, laws be damned, money be damned. What's something you'd like to have? Anything. You can own anything. Or you can do anything. Hmm. Oh, I don't really have a whole lot of have a little more time, you know, to think about Well, that. that's the, there's like spur of the moment. Going. Quick, yeah, quick, quick. Know? Yeah, I guess youth would be a good one. Youth? <laughs> get, get some youth back. There you go. Or a new body. I'll, I'll can go you with build that. the fountain yeah. of youth, the youth, please? The youth, I live pretty hard. So. If, yeah. If I, yeah, if I could keep my mind and get a new body, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd want, I want to uh, take the space shuttle up for a run. 
that would be cool. And then well, jump out. Cool. And then jump out, yeah. <laughs> and then skydive from space. As long as I had the suit on, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That would Maybe be cool. take out a meteor. That'd be all right. <laughs> take out a meteor? Yeah. So you develop around for yeah. that, right? Yeah, that, that's he could take us. Yeah. That is probably the most unique answer to that. Yeah, that's question. Yeah. I yeah. want to take out. I want to take out a meteor around <laughs> that I designed. What round would take out a meteor? Do you think? What kind of design would go behind that? It's going to be electronic. <laughs> it's going to have to be electronic. <laughs> a little EMP. Very good. Do we have any more questions from? Yeah, there's one. Um, the third option would have visibility with you. I don't know. Say Third option have visibility with you. I don't know. Third option have visibility with you. I don't know. Not sure what that means. Craig Halstead. Not, not sure what that means, Craig. Sorry. Add to it. <laughs> Maybe he's talking about have good vision forever. <laughs> wow, well, there you go. Speaking of, I just got my uh, cataract removed. Nice. From from my eye. I've got two new lenses too. I love it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. This yeah. one this one um, left eye still kinda get all the medicine and stuff out of it, so it's not completely clear yet, but right. uh, it'll come. a world of difference. Everything's oh, nice. brighter now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I can see um, depth. I have depth perception now, <laughs> but I didn't awesome. have it before. Yeah, so that's a good thing. I'm excited to go out in September with you guys. Uh, I greatly appreciate the invitation and, and letting letting me and the Leadhead Nation be a part of uh, a world record long shot. Well, you'll be behind the trigger too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get to actually. I don't yes. know. That's a dangerous thing, guys. <laughs> if you knew my history, we um, can chain it down. It'll be all right. I break shit. <laughs> I, mean, I break a lot of shit. Let's that's, see. That's how you know it's good if you can't break it. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Very good. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to let these guys go. they got more stuff they got to do. But thank you guys so much for taking the time to be on. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be doing – I don't know if we got a signal out there or not, but we're going to try to do live coverage in September. Uh, but we're definitely going to be filming and, and doing videos, and we'll be doing the podcast out there as well. Okay. Very cool. Uh, bringing you guys all the information on that. So stay awesome. tuned for that. We're going to be back with more 2018 NRA here at the official lead quarters at Eagle Imports. My good buddy Mike Sodini, Raphael. Is Raphael in the house still? He's right there sitting next to a doctor. He's uh, over there getting his <laughs> blood pressure checked, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell goes on in this booth. <laughs> uh, uh, I've okay? completely <laughs> lost control. Uh, you okay, go. buddy? I'm going that way. You, get, you got the doctor in the house? Or? Oh, yeah. He, 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 was, uh, okay. he was taking my temperature. <laughs> uh, I see. Which, yeah. which way? Yeah. His pants are still on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Landheads, we'll be back with more. Stay tuned. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed those interviews that uh, we're going out there and bringing to you guys from all over the country. So stay tuned because we've got some more uh, events that we're going to be going to, traveling to here in the near future. Uh, Just a little uh, example of that, we're going to be going to Fenway Park. We've had an invitation to uh, go to Fenway Park and actually do the show from there. So we're... We've got that in the works, so that'll be awesome. So we want to find out more about Stacy and Prime One. You know, you just you just don't come up with a camo pattern, you know, as out of the blue. There's got to be a lot of thought, and it has to be useful. It has to be effective. Uh, you can't just throw a bunch of different stuff together and say, "Oh, here's my camo pattern." That's true. Ta- talk That's to true. us. Talk to us a little bit about how you came up with the Prime One pattern, and do you have a name for your pattern? It, the whole family of colors is is prime one, okay. and then each color each color variation has its own name. So, like MP is our multi-purpose pattern that could be used, you know, in multiple terrains. We have woodlands that's a little more green, you know. So we've, we've got different fishing colored patterns. So we've yeah. got names for each color. But the pattern variation. itself is the same. You've got the same pattern each time. That's Correct. the prime one pattern, I guess. Is that's the name for it? Is prime one. Right. Okay. Exactly. the the spot The spot pattern itself in the it doesn't change. It's the color. The color variations change. Okay. And um, you know, I started hunting, and how heck, I was five years old in South Louisiana. Started hunting, shooting, and you know, just grew up with it my whole life. And also was an artist, a uh, wildlife artist, and never stopped that either. And you know, I would go out west and hunt big game elk, mule deer, and that kind of thing. And, you know, if you've ever been out west hunting and stalking, you, you're not staying in a, in a deer stand and, 
you know, you just stick out so bad. And it was like, man, you know, it's got to be a better way to do this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got to looking at different elements of what I noticed when I would paint wildlife. You know, I do, you know, paintings of leopards and, you know, just all these different predators. And it was like, man, they're like the masters of camouflage. You know, what makes them with these elaborate coats blend so well that they can stalk up on their prey? I mean, I watched a video the other day of this this leopard stalking up on this impala, and it never knew he was there. He was five feet away. You know, it's just <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And so, you know, I knew in my mind how it was supposed to work. And artistically, you know, I wanted it to be very um, organic. I didn't want it to have any hard edges I wanted it to be something that no matter where you were in the world, it didn't matter what kind of tree you were in front of. It didn't matter what kind of field you were caught in. Because, I mean, think about it. How many times do you get caught in a situation where you're not undercover? You're not hiding in the perfect, oppor- you know, opportune spot and, and you're busted. You know, you, mm-hmm. it, you want to be able to blend on the fly, basically. And so the organic nature of Prime One and the using non-specific shapes and shadows and tones and colors is what separates us from being able to have to stay in front of, like, let's say, the oak tree. And, you know, when you're looking through the canopy of trees and you see the light fragmenting through the trees, you notice that everything kind of has this little stipple effect is what I call it. Well, that's what I'm trying to mimic with my camouflage. A lot of camos today shy away from the, uh, sorry about that. There's a vote. Shy away from <laughs> the light spots and they want to go darker. And that's what makes a, a camo blob out. And you can tell immediately when you get in the distance and y'all, I know y'all all know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, you don't want your camo blobbing out. And at the end of the day, you know, you know, when I when I think about tactical application, you know, it's critical, you know, and I've got lots of buddies who are so calm, who are, you know, forbidding and just have had, you know, lengthy discussions and told them, hey, look, you know, don't sugarcoat it for me. If this is not good, you know, right. tell me, let me know, because I, that wouldn't function. And, uh, you know, they've they've evaluated it. SOCOM has looked at it. GSG9 is reviewing it. So. Cool. I felt really com- confident about what I had because I would never want to put anybody's life in danger. And I mean, you just shoot me straight and tell me is crap. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, one of the, one of, right out of the shoot, we're only two and a half years old. And a lot of people were like, why do you have so many pro staff and field staff out you know, around the world? I've got about 2000 right now. And I told him, I said, you know, there's no better way to test something in the market than to put it out there and let everybody give you their honest opinion about it. You know, there's no staged photographs. There's no, you know, it's, it's completely go tell me what you really think about it. Don't sugarcoat it. And so we've been very excited. I, you know, for me as an artist and, a, you know, dreaming this thing up and as a hunter to, to see it actually perform like I thought it should in my head mm-hmm. was a great thing. It was a really great thing. And the aspect that I think is really amazing about this is that, um, not only are you, you are a hunter yourself, but you're an artist and <clears throat> an artist sees things that like the normal person doesn't typically see because you're recreating sure. it, you're putting it on canvas. So your, you know, your ideas, your visual skews are, are going to be different than, you know, somebody like me who's not an artist. Talk, talk a little bit about the patterns that are involved with, um, with your design. And what inspired them? Well, you know, if you look at Prime One Camo, it's got you know it's got different little spots and cracked earth and shadow areas, and a lot of those, you know, it was kind of an in not a conscious thing, but you know, the spots of a leopard or you know, you know, stripes of a tiger or you know, feathers from a bird or I, when I, when I go out, I'm very, I'm very observant. And I guess it's just the artist in me when I'm walking around hunting, I'm always looking. And I, I noticed, you know, these little bitty oak trees with these teeny tiny little brown leaves. And I thought, you know, that's so odd that, you know, it's these little bitty, it's not the normal thing you see. So like, mm-hmm. you'll see these little brown spots in our pattern. That's those little oak leaves that I saw that were just completely randomly different. 
you know, so I tried to grab different aspects from nature that no matter how close you were to the pattern or how far away from the pattern you were, there was a lot going on. There weren't a bunch of void areas of blurry or no nothing there because I wanted it to be where if you were standing right next to me, you'd see breakup. Or if you got mm -hmm. farther away, shadow areas come into play that break your outline up. So there's a lot of complexity. I think when I was making it, there was... I couldn't even save the files. There were so many layers. It was just crazy how many layers were involved. But it was it was all grasping from what elements in nature make you naturally break up. Why you know why be the predator? You know why is a predator so efficient at at doing what they do? And it's because of their their camouflage. You know, think about a snake. How many times have you almost stepped on a snake? It's because oh. their their elaborate <laughs> camouflage you know, like, creeps me out. Snakes. But yeah. It's a reality. You know, or or even for even fish. I mean, when you know we're big into the bass fishing side of the equation, and fishing is a large part of what we do. Well, when I've got a son that fishes collegiate bass fishing, I've got one that fishes high school. We we do the, it's a big deal around here. See, I never and, knew that existed until I talked to you. You and I were talking about that uh, a little earlier. Uh, I didn't even know that high school and collegiate they had teams for fishing. That just blew my oh, mind. Oh, it's a big deal. Yeah, that, I think it's but, awesome. You know, it's crazy, but they've they've done it to the point where these fish are not stupid. You know, they're they're looking through the water. And if you're a big giant blob standing there, they can see that. And so camouflaging your body when you're fishing has become a real deal. And and like in Europe, I've got a lot of pro staff over in Europe. And believe it or not, bank fishing for carp is like a major bona fide sport over there. And they take it serious and they have to camouflage themselves because these fish can see them. They're so shallow. Yeah. So breaking out your breaking up your outline it, is a big deal now everybody's like why do you have so many colors in your camo well let's face it the day that that our buddies over at real tree and mossy stuck camo on a bikini and, <laughs> and all of a sudden it became fashion <laughs> bless them there you go there is a more attractive way to do it <laughs> <laughs> so i figured look if you're gonna look good going in the woods or coming out of the woods i mean why not make them attractive or if you're never even going to go to the woods and you just get hey, your favorite you can color wind up in the bar or wherever i yeah. mean you look good doing it at least you know where your so, favorite color so that's where that's where that all came from you know i figured hey it'll look just as good on a bikini or a surfboard you can you can have we've got our buddies over at CP Tactical that are uh, working on seracoding our pattern right now, so that'll be coming real soon. And cool. you know, and everybody, you know, the funny thing is, yes, I'm a woman. I'm the only woman camouflage designer in the world, so they claim. And and no, I'm not your typical woman by any stretch or fashion. And if you're a woman out there, hey, kudos to you if you're listening to this show because it means you're out of the box too. Um, I grew up hunting my entire life. I am not uh, gentle or timid or anything remotely close to that. And <laughs> so don't think my pattern is a foo-foo pattern that some goofy girl designed. I can promise you I would challenge you or anybody. You can stick your butt out in the woods, go, go hand it to <laughs> one of your military buddies, and I promise you they're going to say, yeah, that would work. Yeah. Um, challenge me on it, you know. I feel that confident about it. And so don't don't get the idea of us having a broad spectrum of, of where our camo can wind up diluting it per se. You know, yes, we have very efficient colors that will work for hunting or tactical. You can see it on our website. We've got well, it all another segmented thing. out. Yeah, that's another thing with the different colors is, you know, nature doesn't stay one color. You know, it, it varies. Never. Yeah. Know? So the the – the colors that you have fit into different terrain, different times of the season. Um, and like exactly. They said different types of, of hunting, you know, depends on what you're, if you're fishing, you know, you've got camo for the fishing. And I never realized that, that, you know, fish can, you know, see things out of water too. But yeah, I mean, you're right. They can look up and then they see a big blob, then they're going to be a little 
pardon the pun, fishy about that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Especially if you're bed fishing when they're on when they're on their beds laying their eggs, and it's a clear, you know, you're fishing a clear lake. Yeah, you are out in the Gulf where it's real clear. Oh yeah, you will get busted. They'll see you. Yeah, and you that's said how I, many? That's why you see these these big bay boats with these high platforms, and they're casting as far as they can. It's because those fish can see them coming. Yeah. Uh, and you said how many different colors do you have? I have 22 different colors that are in full production right now. Now I've got some that are just strictly fashion, like turquoise. Well, turquoise could be a fishing color, but sure. you know, pink, pink because you just you got to have a pink camo. I'm sorry, it's just, <laughs> it's just poor for the course. It's a norm. <laughs> um, and ours is probably the best looking pink camo out there. I w- I would say. Um, you know, we've got several tactical colors. You know that. Just we've got a couple of colors that were geared strictly for European countries, but they're going to work fantastic for early season hunting here. Um, so just, you know, hey, I'm an artist. What can I say? I, I, I had a wild hair and I ran with it. And when I run with something, do move out the way I'm coming. You know, it's just. So no did you, me. I'm, I'm, what was your inspiration for that? Did Did you have somebody say, hey, you really should do one of these? Or were you just, you know, I know you said you were out there and you're like, hey, there's got to be something better. Was that the drive? Is that you wanted to just, you, you, like, I can do a better camo than what's out existing today? Well, I've, I've been kind of mixed into the industry just by association with my husband who had Browning License and Mossy and Realtree and all those guys. And he had clients that kept coming to him saying, you know, everything is the same in the stores. There's not a variety. We need something different. And when he said that, I was like, well, heck, you know, I'm an artist. I'm a hunter. I, I can probably figure this out. So let's give it a whirl. And that was two and a half years ago. That's all she wrote. You know, yep. I got a wild hair one night at 1030 and I started <laughs> plugging away and the rest is history, <laughs> you know. Right. Right. Well, so. I, I like the pattern personally. Um, I've seen it before. I didn't really I didn't know it was your pattern. Uh, I had seen it. I can't remember where I saw it. I think I saw it like uh on one of, uh, do you do hydro dip? I do. Patterns? I do. I think I saw we have, it maybe. We on... have uh, 12 different water transfer film colors okay. available to dip guns and bows. And in fact, we're partnering with new breed archery and they, they were, po- they were posting videos of dipping some, some risers this week. Uh, so nice. yeah, we, we've got, uh, wind and weaponry on board. We've got, um, we're talking to sky. We're talking to forest. We're talking to, um, uh, Taurus and uh, Troy. We're talking. We were talking to Remington. We're talking to Savage Drake Associates. Uh, Chris Drake over there is doing some just tricked out custom jobs yeah. in our pattern. Um, we've got Burris Optics that's working with us. We're looking at GPO right now. Uh, Sealand International overseas, who's a huge apparel company mm-hmm. in Europe. Um, they're on board with us, and uh, we're talking to Sour. So we've got a lot of a lot of gun companies coming on board, and just a, a very broad spectrum of companies: Frog Togs, Ingle Coolers. I mean, you name it. Ingle Coolers has got one of the coolest things ever. It's a backpack cooler bag, hmm. and it, it it fits on your back like a backpack, and it is the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's just brilliant idea. And those guys cool. down there in Jupiter, Florida, are just so cool. They're in fact they're in the middle of wrapping their entire uh, SEMA built competition dodge ram in our camo along with their big enclosed trailer so nice we got a lot of cool things going on yes you do you're very busy and uh, i'm sure that that list will continue to grow uh, especially as we get to know each other uh, a little better i've got several people i need to introduce you to Um, i'm always happy to talk to them for sure but you said uh, so we're going to find out a little more about you um learned about the company so you said you started hunting at around the age of six yeah, I was I was five years old. I uh, grew up in South Louisiana. My dad was a big hunter and fishing, you know, fishing in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I was the first kid, so I got to go with him. And I've got a picture on my website of uh, me standing in the front of my house in the front yard with my first set of hip boots and World War II camo overalls <laughs> and a 14 shotgun. And I was ready to roll. <laughs> you should post that. That would be awesome. No. Oh, it's yeah, it's on, it's up. I'll uh, I'll have to share it on Facebook again, but it's on our website. Yeah, it's okay. it's pretty funny. Now that uh, that four ten was that the first gun that you'd ever shot? 
That was the first gun I ever shot or had. And then my very first rifle, my dad didn't believe in soft playing it. <laughs> y'all are, y'all are lead heads. So I'm going to lead head from the word go. So oh, you'll yeah. really appreciate this. It was a 30 odd six feather light and it would kick your teeth in. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I was my rifle, man. I was proud. And you, we all know when you're pulling the trigger at an animal, you don't feel it anyway. But boy, target shooting was a fun time. Oh, and man. I had to do it myself. And uh, but it was, it was all now, good. Now I've, I've stepped it up a notch. I now believe in shooting a 308. There is no other caliber for a regular hunting. And when I go out west, I shoot a 300 wind mag because, hey, you got to reach out and touch somebody and put smack down on them. And uh, <laughs> I was pretty smack, excited. <laughs> I went down, I went to uh, Mesa, Colorado this past year with a couple of my buddies, uh, Army Rangers, and there was eight of us. And I was the only woman. And um, they were going to ring the gong at 600 yards. And so my two military buddies went first and they were like, okay. You know, they each shot once, missed it, hit it the second time because they had to dial it in with the wind. Mm-hmm. And so I, I asked one of them, I'm like, okay, check out my new scope from Burst. And they look at it and they're like, put it on this mill dot, you know, adjust it over to the side. I rang it on the second time. So I was pretty proud. I was the farthest we could shoot on that on that range was 600 yards. But I was only three of us out of all those guys. None of them had the balls to do it except for me and the two military guys. And we all and three rang it. So. Nice. I was pretty fired up. Now, do you still have the first gun that you shot? Do you still have that uh, that 410? I do that? not have that 410. It got lost in the Gulf of Mexico, unfortunately, in, uh, uh, in a boat. My dad had it. Uh, I don't even know what he was doing with it, but it was in the boat, and it got lost. So, no, I don't have that. I still have the .30-06. Nice. I mean, we're kind of we're kind of the of the opinion you can never have too many guns. I get them for Mother's Day and Christmas presents. And we've got... Two gun safes, and they're in every single corner of the house. You know, we're, we're <laughs> way over 50 guns. I've got two sons, so it, it's a family affair. Uh, yeah, don't come busting in my house unless you just have a, a death wish. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So your two sons, I think you were talking earlier, um, in, in one of them going, is he's on a fishing team, is that right, or are they both on the fishing yeah, team? Yeah, one of them fishes for Bethel University, and they just won the school of the year and the national championship. He'll be going out to Oklahoma fishing Congrats. in a couple of weeks. And, in fact, they're down in Mexico fishing with the Outdoor Channel with uh, Ultimate Match Fishing right now. That's and, awesome. And uh, my youngest son is a senior in high school. And, they're get, and they get scholarships for fishing now. Is Absolutely. That, that yeah. is awesome. Big time. That is so Bethel awesome. Bethel University has one of the best scholarship programs in the country for, for competitive collegiate fishing. And, in fact, my, my youngest son has already got a scholarship offer to go there. And when they fly back from uh, Mazatlan tomorrow and from El Salto, two days, and then they'll be starting the high school world finals. And we, uh, cool. Prime One takes that, that all very seriously. We sponsor collegiate uh, archery teams. We have um, collegiate bass fishing teams that we sponsor. And then we also have 10 states that we sponsor that are high school fishing programs. We've got, just to give you an idea of the what numbers we're talking about. Texas alone has five divisions. And in each division, the, 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 there's two, two kids and a boat captain. So you're talking about three people per boat. They're averaging 250 plus boats a tournament. Wow. And they run five divisions. I mean, it's staggering. <laughs> Second biggest is, is Florida and Alabama. And then we That's have Kentucky. Huge. So we've got We've got them all over the country that, and what they do is we give them swag and we sponsor them and they wear a camo on their shirt, on their jerseys. And just for anybody that's out there that competition shoots, we do have a, ca- a tactical competition shooting team, but um, we now are, are, our camo are, is available through Rageous Outdoors, Gemini, uh, E3 Sports, Valley Fashions, all of your sublimation jersey companies who do competition jerseys. Pretty much all of them around the country now have our camo patterns. And hey, if you if you place and you have our jer- our camo on your jersey, we give swag away. So just nice. FYI, well, we've got uh, tag us in a picture. A couple of three gunners that we do some some things with from time to time too. So I'll make sure we get those introductions made as well. Now, when it comes to now, you don't have military law enforcement background, correct, or do you? No, my, my father-in-law was, uh, he served two tours in Vietnam. He was an Army Ranger, 
he um actually has purple heart and gold medal of valor. He was the only one in his platoon to survive. He uh, toted the other guy out. Well, there was two survivors. He's now since passed away. But uh, yeah, he. So I do come from my grandfather's all fought. My father was. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was honorably discharged because of hearing loss. But uh, yeah. So it, it's we bleed red, white, and blue, and we've got you know family that have fought and served, and so it's it's. There you go. It's a big deal to us. We we're very very strong supporters in. You know, different. We have uh, the Hookshead Brothers who take wounded uh, PTSD recovering guys hunting and fishing. We've got um, Bog Outdoors. We've got several Team Halo. You know, several different programs that we work with that um, awesome. that try to support our yeah. guys. Well, I mean, we made that clear. You are a patriotic company, and we appreciate Absolutely. everything that you're doing for for law law enforcement, military men and women. And the, hey, the high the school. The way I like to say it is uh, God fearing, flag flying, gu- uh, gun slinging. There so. you go. And and our younger generation as well. All you're doing for those those young uh, archers and fishermen and women. Hey, you gotta you gotta bring them up right. You gotta teach them to love the outdoors. Get them while you can. Otherwise, they're gonna be back there playing that thumb hockey on TV. You know, <laughs> too, many, too much of that going on. Need to get them outside. Speaking of, of thumb hockey uh, and um, pop culture. When it comes to pop culture, whether it's a, a movie, a TV show, a magazine, um, maybe a, a podcast, I mean, who knows? What is your go-to that is outdoors, hunting-related, um, firearms-related? Well, we sponsor um, American Air Gunner. American Archer, which that's not lead, but American Air Gunner, and well, we that's sponsor fine. Yeah. Um, uh, Trigger Time TV now. Um, yeah, I, sad thing is I stay so busy now that I, I don't even get on TV very much. <laughs> yeah. What about growing <laughs> up? Was there a movie? What was your go-to? And it doesn't have to. Oh. It could just be anything. What's your just go-to movie? What's your favorite movie? Oh, oh Shooter. Shooter. Oh, yeah? Out of all the movies. Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we can pretty much quote every line to Step Brothers in this house, including me. And uh, yeah, anytime Shooter is playing, we're all watching. Love me I some James Will. Bond. You gotta love James Bond. So speaking of of Shooter and um, Step Brothers, I watched the other guys last night, which has <laughs> Marky Mark, and it's got Will Ferrell in it. So. Yeah. You can't go wrong with those guys. That's a hilarious they're, movie too. Yeah. Yep, they're pretty funny. I, in fact, when we were posting and I was, you know, having to egg everybody on with this competition going on on social media, I said, you know, we're not going to be first losers. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to go on and call it out. Yeah. Um. And speaking of shooter, there's a there's a TV. I think it's a Netflix or something original that. Yeah, you know. Uh, it's good. I'm kind of. A, it's, is it? I hadn't. Yeah. I hadn't gone there yet. I, you know. So I'm basically, kind of on the whole. Yeah, basically, the profession. first season is just like the movie, but the second season it turns into and morphs into it. it. Yeah, it carries on the story. It's good. It's pretty good. I've enjoyed it so I'm far. Have to check it out. I didn't enjoy the first season so much because I was like, it's just the recreation of the of the movie. But they had to do it to get to season two. So yeah, to make sense. Yeah, for people gotcha. who didn't didn't see the movie, so. Uh, check it out. It's Thanks on Netflix. So. Um, what is your next gotta have, wanna have bucket list item? Right now, you know, with the way that retail is in the country, um, apparel, apparel is the big deal. That's why this competition is such a major big deal. I mean, you know, I've got one overseas company, I've got one smaller company stateside, but you know, I, I need to, uh, we're, we're talking to Columbia right now, uh, but we need to land a big apparel company. And uh, okay. yeah, that's my bucket list top. Okay. So what personally, if you could, if you could uh, own any, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to just limit it to firearms. I'm going to say anything. Laws be damned, money be damned. What would you have? Oh, that's easy. Blazer, I, I, I'm good friends with the Blazer guys over in Germany. 
They make the sickest straight bolt action rifle you've ever seen. I'm sure y'all know it, instead mm -hmm. of having to jack that thing up, it just slides so smooth straight back. It, I mean, you never have to come off that scope and you just pop that sucker straight on back. And it is a beautiful thing. Blazer. So they have taken gun building to an art form over there. It's it, unreal. So yeah, that's what I would do. I'd get a 308 Blazer straight bolt action. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. And what do those run typically? Just starting off mm, about ten grand. Three? No, no, they're not that bad. I just, you know around four grand. Oh, okay. But no, I do have uh, I do have my guys. I got to give my uh, my guys love down in Miami, Carbon Tech Arms. Uh, they're supposed to be building me a pretty sweet little number three hundred Win Mag. All you know, carbon. Uh, you know, the whole carbon light fiber, weight, yeah. super lightweight. Because man, that one I got right now, it's a, a beast. It is so heavy to stalk with. Yeah. And so I've got, I've actually got a custom built. There's only three of them like it. Uh, burst scope right now that is just waiting for a home, and I'm waiting for that gun to put it on. So <laughs> we need to hook you up. Whole... You hook it with ride on. We'll get you some good scopes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we'll give you some hey good tell them give me a call. I'd be more than happy. Hey, well, we'll we actually a, we'll talked a, about you the other day, so yeah, don't be surprised uh, if if you do. Now that that um, uh, that blazer gun you're talking about, you could go out and buy that today. I'm talking think bigger for laws be damned, uh, money be damned. What would you own? What would you, you own? Know, think I, big. Think big, Stacy. You know. I, I, I'm not. I'm not really into the big calibers, other than you know. No, anything. I, I mean, for any, me, it's all a, anything. For me, it's all a. Anything. Well, I, mean, I would love to get behind a 50 cal and just let some. I, my buddy over Andy Anderson. I want to get up in his chopper and let that sucker just fly. You know, Girl, shoot, mow down a few pigs. I like where um, your head's at because everything's guns, guns, guns. This could be anything. This could be a vehicle. This could be anything. Oh, okay. This could be any. Think. Hmm. Think. Sky's the limit. You could own anything. That's tough. That's tough. Um, but I like where your yeah. head's at because you you automatically start going to guns or outdoor or something like that. So, <laughs> you know, I'm such a practical person. You know, I, my toys involve. But that guns, says a uh, lot know, about you. Girls, that if you go in my closet, it's all camo. I mean, I just don't get into stuff, and so you know, I, it's not going to be a girly answer at all. You know, probably <laughs> an F one fifty. You know, and love it. It's fully wrapped. You know, I would, you know, I, I'm getting ready to get a really new badass bonafide fishing rig kayak that I'm going to just go fiddle farting around on Pickwick Lake in, you know, probably. How about a submarine? Um, no, I, I, I rode in a submarine one time. And let me tell you, the, the, the pressure, I don't know how those guys can. Yeah. Kudos to you dudes that stay in those things all the time because the air pressure when my ears, I was ready to have high speed come apart. I was like, I got to get out of this Murph. No way. Did you get in uh, one of those big military um, submarines, nuclear submarines? Or? No, it was in some little gimpy ass one off the coast <laughs> of Hawaii. Well, there you go. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> it was not a good deal. Um, yeah, you, you know, and I've, I've, flown, I've flown upside down over the Mississippi River. I got in a plane with a crazy. And he, he flipped that sucker. It was one of these little kit planes, and he was yeah. military. And he rolled that baby in a barrel roll, and he, he took it over the Mississippi five foot above the water. Yeah, that was the last time I did that. Um, You know, I would say, you know, I just don't have a big bucket list when it comes to stuff. You yeah. know, I want to go walk the Great Wall of China. You know, I want to I want to go. I'm going to red to red stag hunt in Argentina. That's my big splurge for this year is I'm going to go shoot a red stag in Argentina. There you go. And, uh, That's cool. Possibly a black buck. So, you know, I, I'm kind of more of a. Uh, what if you could own the Great Wall of China? Do what? I said, what if you could own the Great Wall of China? <laughs> no, that's all right. That's too much. That's too much stuff to mess with. You that's know, fine. I, I'm just I giving do. you a hard time. You answered. You answered the question with your heart, so, and I'm just giving you a hard time now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, hey, w the real one thing that people know about me, real quick, is I, you know, I, I love experiences. I love relationships, and things don't really mean a lot to me. I'd rather go do 
things than have things, if that makes any sense. It makes perfect. With your answers, that told me everything. Person. Yeah. Now, I do believe in having my guns. But, uh, yeah, I'm just not a real materialistic person. All right, last question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could spend the day at the range with anyone or any group of people, whether they're um, fictional, maybe they've passed, they're not alive, um, who would it be? Oh, that's a tough one. You know, I, I've got some some living buddies that I just think of the world. You know, the world of yeah. my buddy uh, Billy Paul retired army ranger he he served so many tours he's a true hero in my mind and he's just an incredible guy and i love going to the range shooting with him he's just you learn so much from him when i'm there and uh you know i would say craig sawyer probably you know i'd love to spend a day Saw he and i are buddies i'd love to spend a day out there on the range with him just collaborating on you know showing me how to fine tune um because i'm not afraid to try anything and i you know I will tr I will try to reach out. I'd love to. Uh, my bucket list is to shoot a thousand yards, you know, and and not have it be an issue at all. Because if, I promise you, if an elk walked out a thousand yards, I'd let it fly. So guess um, what? So guess what? Coming up. Uh, go ahead and finish here, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you something along those lines. So. Well, and I was gonna say, you know, as far as being passed away, you know, I, I had my grandfather. Good answer. Yeah. We had a lot of people say their dad, their grandfather, want to spend a little more time with them. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good answer. Uh, we've had fictional characters. You know, people have said um, um, Clint Eastwood, uh, Dirty Harry, not Dirty Harry, but what's his uh, <laughs> his Western spaghetti Western character? Guns are never guns are never on or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, his old his old westerns. We've had um, the Lone Ranger. Um, yeah, I got one. Doc Holliday. Elvis. I'm Doc Holliday's made the list. Yes. Wyatt Earp's made the list. I'm your Huckleberry. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So you're saying uh, early you wanted to go out to, you know, 1,000 yards. You'd love to do that. So coming up Labor Day week, um, we're going out to, I believe it's Utah, with Charlie Melton. And Are you familiar with Charlie Melton? Mm-hmm. So uh, he's – he. I don't know if he still has it or somebody's broke it, but he had the world's longest rifle shot. He was at over 5,000. I think it was 5,025 yards. That's crazy. So we're going to go out. We're going to go out this, um, this Labor Day, and he's going to break that record, whatever existing record it is, and we're going to warm up with 4,000, do the 5,000 again, and then hit 6,000, and then maybe even a little further than that. That's incredible. So um, that, if you know, if you wanted to make arrangements to come out and be a part of that, we might be able to set that up as well. Hey, just yeah, fill me in on those dates. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be, that's going to be really cool. <laughs> very, very. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I don't know if my sight that, through a scope would be that good <laughs> <laughs> to see that far. Golly, I can't even imagine. Yeah, that's why I want to. That's why I want to go because I actually want to. I want to be there while he's doing it. I want to see what he's doing. Actually, he's going to let me have some trigger time, so I'm going to get an opportunity to shoot uh, some long. I don't know that Very I'll cool. do the the big well, you know, long I, I've one. I've kind of got a vendetta. I've got a vendetta on why I want to be able to shoot a thousand yards. About three years ago, I was hunting out west in Mesa, Colorado, and oh man, we were glassing the side of this mountain, and we saw a freak nasty of a bull up on the top of the mountain. I mean, as far as you could go up, he was, of course, that's where he was. Yeah. And, uh, so here we go, man. We plowing off going, going in his direction. And I'm not joking when I, I tell you that the name of this gorge was called Hell's Hole because it was, and it was Hell's Hole. It was a freaking nightmare. Rightly named. Yeah. Straight, straight up. <laughs> I mean, straight down, straight up the other side. Well, we're humping it, getting that way. Getting halfway up and couldn't quite get in range yet. We were probably right around a thousand yards, and that bastard decided he was going to chase a cow around the other side of the mountaintop. <laughs> he said, "See ya." <laughs> and I was like, "Dang, you better be glad I hadn't tested it at a thousand yards because I'd have sure let one rip." That's funny. So, if that ever happens to me again, I will try it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I will try that you might shot. as well. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, he'd have rolled right on down the mountain to me. I mean, it was it was crazy. It was crazy. I said I needed a Scud missile. <laughs> <laughs> well, very so. cool. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to answer those questions. So we've learned a little more about you. Uh, we've learned about your well, company. I appreciate being on. We uh, want you leadheads to go and vote. We want America to win the uh, first camo, what are they calling it? It's the UF Pro 2018 World Camo Cup. World and, Camo uh, Cup. We want, a, we want USA to win. Um, well, prime one to win. So you guys yes. go cast your vote. We got to bring it. Go to uh, Prime One social media pages. There's links there on uh, and instructions on how you can vote. Go to their yep, Prime One Camo.com. While you're there, give them a like. Let them know that you're Leadhead, and um, make sure that you go to their website. Check out these awesome uh, different colors that they've got and their awesome camo pattern, the Prime One pattern, uh, and. There's, you've got links to everywhere that they can go and get uh, the people, I do. people I do. that are using your camera. And all of our new gear is coming in August. Don't forget about the 50% off code. And uh, if you if you vote um, if you vote in our competition this week and we make it and progress through the rounds, which I have every intention of doing, um, we'll find a lead sled person on there in the voting and, and we'll throw some swag your way. So there you go. Just keep your eyes out and go vote. Spread go, the guys. word. And as I promised, this is our 250th episode, and we are going to give one of you lucky leadheads a nice little swag package. And I'm going to go to iTunes, and I haven't been there in a while, so let's see if there's any new ratings from, from you leadheads at iTunes. And let's see. Go to most recent. Here we go. June 19th, as a matter of fact. We've got Giddy Up, G-I-D-Y-U-P. It says, Lefty has honed his craft over several years to build a tight and well-produced show. He has been able to interview some of the firearm industry's leaders in a compelling format. I don't know about hey. that, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he gave us a whopping five star review. So thank you, Giddy Up. And you are the lucky recipient of our 250th episode swag package, which is going to include you got it, a talking lead assault mug. We're going to get you one of those. You're going to get a, a modern Spartan system starter kit that has their accuracy oil, their carbon destroyer, the lead uh, destroyer, crystal clear. Uh, I'll hook you up with some TVT if I've got any left, uh, and then I'll hook you up with a few more things that we've got in our uh, Talking Lead Swag Vault, and I think Stacy is going to add to this as well. Yeah, we're going to throw in a performance long sleeve t-shirt and uh, one of our new uh, Prime One Camo American Flag Richardson hats. Bam! So there you go, Leadheads. I told you it pays to be engaging with us on social media leaving us feedback on these podcasting apps and stations. Uh, every little bit helps us. A uh, five-star rating goes a long way and boosts us up on, on iTunes, so make sure you guys are going. And uh, if you haven't done so yet, do that for us. We'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, and if you've got nominations for the Jack Wagon Train, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up. Um, let me go back to, to Pierce. Pierce, for your nomination this week also, I'm going to hook you up uh, with some stuff as well. Uh, so thank you for submitting our Jack Wagon of the Week this week, the uh, drop leg knee holster guy. <laughs> so uh, you guys shoot me an email, talkinglet at gmail.com, you winners, with your contact information. Uh, and uh, we'll make sure that Stacy gets that and she can send uh, you the Prime One stuff as well. Um so be engaging with us, guys. It pays. Uh, email us, talkinglet at gmail.com if you've got suggestions for the show. You've got jack wagons. Uh, if there's a certain topic that you want us to talk about, love hearing from you guys. Don't be scared. I'm I'm very approachable and easy to talk to. So, Would you say so, Stacey? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
And same thing with Stacy. Uh, if you guys have a question for Stacy about uh, about her camo, or uh, maybe you've got a high school that's got a fishing team that needs maybe some some cool camo, uh, get in touch. absolutely. You can you can email us at info at camo at uh, prime one camo dot com. There you go, and uh, make sure that she knows that you're a lead head. You heard about them here on Talking Lead. And again, as always, make sure you support those that support this show. Right on, the official optics of Talking Lead. Defy Watches, the official wristwear of Talking Lead. Modern Spartan Systems and all their line of awesome lube products that they have for your guns. Hey, they've even got stuff for fishing uh, rigs too, Stacy. I forgot about that. Oh, cool. Yeah, they've got got a product for uh, uh, for fishing reels. Um, Check that out. X-Steel Targets, xsteeltargets.com. And, of course, 1776 United, where you can get all your cool Talking Lead swag. Uh, soon to be the uh, Talking Lead Assault mugs, but you get those at www.dip123.com forward slash Talking Lead at the moment. And I think they're still $25, but don't hold me to that. The price may have gone up. We just ran that for a, a special for just a little while. So. Stacy, again, thank you so much. Guys, make sure you go check out Prime One Camo, uh, all their social media, their website, and vote because we want them to win, and you could win also. So take part. Thank you. Be engaging. That does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast, Leadheads. As always, keep your loved ones close. This is Stacy Walker with Prime One Camo. Keep your firearms closer. And keep them covered with Prime One Camo. Roger that. Out.